The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Sweaty and pissed, sweaty and pissed, menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. Hello everybody, this is Sweaty and Pissed, Menopause and More. I'm Leanne Morgan, comedian and nut. This is Karen Nickel, nurse practitioner. Yes, that would be me, Karen Nickel, nurse practitioner. So here we are again in our Zoom world. Here we are again. And let me tell you, I've got some news. Yes. My grandbaby is the size of a spaghetti squash today. Oh. I know. You can hold a spaghetti squash. You know it. Yeah. We're so excited. Mary has an app that tells her what the baby's if the what size the baby is compared to a vegetable or a fruit. So <laughs> today, our baby is the size of a spaghetti squash, and, we, and we're on a, a whole family text, and we just get so excited. The baby's due in December. Everything looks great. They had an ultrasound yesterday, and the baby's wild as a buck. And they can barely get pictures of him because he's so active and he likes to swim, which sounds like Charlie. It sounds like my baby. Anyway, um, so anyway, I just had to tell you that was some news. I've been taking care of my little mom and daddy, and I've been, um, and when I'm out in the country, I don't, they have terrible Wi Fi. And so um, that's the only thing I've gotten to see is that I got a text from my family saying the baby's the size of a spaghetti squash. Well, that's nice to have something tangible like that. To I know. know. And then one of Mary's friends just had her little baby girl. and But before she had the baby, at the very end, they said, your baby's the size of a Pomeranian little dog. And we all got so <laughs> tickled over that. You know, a Pomeranian, that's big. I think that's so sweet that you can think about your little baby squash. I just think that's exciting. I know, I know. Oh, I've got to do a nursery. I want to. I want the baby to have a bed at my house, and the, and Charlie and Mary look at me like I'm crazy. And then I think y'all don't understand the how tired you're going to be, and you're going to be so thankful that I want to be a hands-on grandmother, and that Chuck Morgan is a baby cuddler at East Tennessee Children's Hospital. That's right. They just don't know. You know, right now they're talking boundaries. They're like, you know, we've got to have boundaries. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. When you're com- when you're completely sleep deprived, you'll be handing the baby over for sure. Yes. You'll be dropping the baby off in the driveway. <laughs> I know that when I would breastfeed mine, I, there were times I hallucinated. I mean, I was so, <laughs> so tired. <laughs> But anyway, uh, they'll find out. And then they want to have two or three. And so, you know, by that third one, yeah, they'll um, just leave it in the kitchen, <laughs> on the kitchen counter and go, hey, we just left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Baby's, baby's on the counter. Um, <laughs> so, well, speaking of squash and food, um, I... Uh, Last week, we released the episode about leaky gut, and I talked to the listeners about leaky gut and what you can do about uh, fixing that problem, because we'd had some questions from listeners, one about IBS specifically, and uh, one about supplements to take if you have celiac disease. Um, So I touched on um, what leaky gut is and why it happens and what we can do to uh, prevent it, stop it, heal it. So I wish you'd been there because I know your gut is part of your struggle. So, yes. And I talk about that on stage and I talk about it and, but I do, I hear uh, a lot. Everything has to do with your leaky gut, right? If your leaky gut, if your gut's healthy, then there's a lot of things going on in your body that are functioning well. Right. Okay. Bottom line, just tell me bottom line. You, what did you tell people to, um, well, well, in terms of the importance of what, what happens in your gut is that, you know, 
90% of our serotonin is produced in our gut and utilize, absorbed in our gut. So, um, so it really impacts mood. Um, if your guts, if you have a leaky gut, you have a lot of inflammation going on and that increases risk for cardiovascular disease and, um, and it, a leaky gut affects your absorption of nutrients and absorption of hormones if you're taking hormones. So it really can um, negatively impact hormone balance if you're, um, if you're dealing with a leaky gut. And what do, you, what do you think, Leanne? What do you think causes leaky gut? I bet you can guess. Um, is it white flour and sugar? <laughs> I don't know. Is it everything that I do? Sugar, sugar is one of them. Sugar, okay. Yes, yeah, sugar is um, one. Uh, is alcohol? Alcohol, yes. Okay, and? Something, and another thing you don't know anything about, uh, stress. So stress causes leaky gut. Yep. Mm. Yep. Preservatives. Preservatives in our food. Mm-hmm. Artificial sweeteners. Oh, even stevia. What about monk fruit? <laughs> well, st stevia is made from the chrysanthemum flower, so it's not like using aspartame or sucralose or what are some of those other ones. So, yeah, no, see, stevia is an exception. It is. Because it's a plant-based Mm -hmm. as, as is xylitol. Xylitol is made from the bark of birch trees and berries. Mm -hmm. I've used xylitol before. What about monk fruit? How do you feel about that? Well, I, I, I know it's a good antioxidant, oh. which would help your gut. Okay, because I've been using, when I cook for my mom and dad, I've been using um, monk fruit has a uh, granulated kind of like a substitute for sugar and then oh. they have a powdered sugar but it's made up out of monk fruit and you don't use near as much as you do of sugar nice and have you baked have you baked with it or anything I have, and i have i have and i think it does pretty well good yeah and it's i think it's from asia <laughs> and then i use the brand lacanto um and i get it at fresh market and whole foods and places like that Nice. Well, that's a that's a smart choice. Well, I hope so, honey. You know they tell you a bunch of stuff, and then you then you think you hear it's not good. So I wanted your opinion, Monk. Yeah. Well, is that is that all that's in it? What else is in it? Do you know? You know, I in don't know. I, um, I don't. I'm not with it right now. That big bag I brought to my mom and daddy's. <laughs> I don't know, Karen. But I can let me. I don't know. Let me see if I. Can. That's okay. <laughs> So, so some of the other things are, um, you know, if you're eating foods, if you have food sensitivities and you're eating foods that um, cause a, a reactive process, that can um, cause leaky gut and um, you know, unnecessary antibiotics, smoking, and you know, of course, um, if you're eating GMO foods. That's also not good for your gut. Genetically modified. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can try to get non-GMO foods and certainly limit your foods that are preservative containing, that is really key. So, so yeah, leaky gut, uh, basically, you know, the lining of your gut, it becomes dysfunctional and it allows the leakage of particles into your bloodstream from your gut. And that leads to some food sensitivities and inflammation. And so I put, um, I, I discussed supplements you can take to help with uh, leaky gut and, um, and a specific uh, protocol for leaky gut uh, from a company called Microbiome Labs. And um, it's a three different supplements that you take. They have, there's a 12 week intensive protocol and then you can follow it with just a maintenance protocol. And, um, 
And I, by the way, I, I went ahead right after I did that episode and I posted all that information on our website in the blog portion at the bottom of the, the website page. So that's all there. So, so some of the things that um, can help with repairing the gut include intermittent fasting, which we've talked about before. And you like, how, what's the, the time on your intermittent fasting? You know, you hear so many different things. What did you, what is well, there, the one you like? Well, there are a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, one that I have done was um, to just have two days a week when you eat only 500 calories on those days. But some people find that difficult because, you know, it's, it's not very many calories. So um, most people who are able to do it and, and continue it on a sustained basis uh, are doing the um, eight hours of eight hour period of the day when they are eating and 16 hours when they're not eating. So they only eat during eight hours of the 24 hour period. So like 11 AM to seven, and then you don't eat anything after that. So that can help because, because intermittent fasting lowers insulin like growth factor hormone, which when that level is high can cause elevated blood sugar and insulin levels and Inflama- cause inflammation, ca- cardiovascular disease, promotes cancer. So keeping the insulin-like growth factor hormone down can really help with a lot of things, not just leaky gut. So, um, and you know, and consuming a lot of a, a variety of vegetables. You know, don't just eat potatoes. You eat, <laughs> try to eat as many colorful vegetables, especially as possible. So. Um, and I, uh, on the blog, I put a photo of some very colorful plates of vegetables that you can see as an example, if you're not sure. And then also, is it fermented foods? Well, fermenting, yeah, that would, I mean, that would be good. The, the main thing is you want to promote a, a healthy microbiome. So, you know, f- fermented foods often um, will help promote um good bacteria and contain good bacteria. So that is certainly an option. Um, that regimen I told you about from Microbiome Labs, they have a, um, a probiotic, a mega probiotic and a mega prebiotic and a, a product called um, Mega Mucosa that helps heal the lining of the gut. So it's sort of a complete package of, of things to, for healing. So, you know, in okay. turn, I'll probably need to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought of you when I was talking about those uh, those supplements, but it, you know, it could be a, a a helpful thing and it definitely um I think it would help to do that 12 week intensive regimen, which again, I posted a website um on the blog in the blog uh with the whole protocol for the 12 week intensive regimen so that you can yeah, so it's easy to find. Um, but, you know, a lot of signs of leaky gut, we went over those, include, you know, food sensitivities or allergies, just chronic d- digestive issues, which you, you know all about, you know, abdominal bloating or diarrhea, constipation, cramping. Uh, so anything that's even mild symptoms all the way up to, you know, pretty severe IBS. Um, and I did want to reinforce, if I didn't make this clear before, that you know there's a difference between IBS and something like um, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Um, those are not that you can't work to heal your gut with those um, disease processes, but I would say that if you're having gut problems that um, are especially are new and are ongoing more than you know three or four weeks for sure um, that needs to get checked out to just make sure what you're dealing with is just an irritable bowel or some food intolerance like lactose intolerance something like that um, you don't want to have bowel symptoms go on for long periods and find out you're actually got something like ulcerative colitis so those things need to be ruled out if you're having continuing problems. Okay. So. If someone out in the United States is listening 
and mm-hmm. they don't know if they have food allergies or that they have, you know, a sensitivity to something. What do you, how do you, what do you tell them to do when they go to their um, provider? What would they ask for? Yeah, it's tricky. It's a good question because, um, you know, I do, Al, as you know, ALCAT testing, A-L-C-A-T, which is a blood test for food sensitivities. And you can check up to 250 different foods. Uh, and it incur- includes herbs, uh, spices, and you know things that are difficult to uh, determine through an elimination diet. Um, but that's not typically offered in most traditional medical practices. Um, but you can go to the ALCAT website and find search for a provider um, who will order those labs for you. It's the easiest way to find out food sensitivities versus, I mean, you certainly could do an elimination diet. It just is, can get tricky when there are so many, so many foods. But um, the four biggies that cause problems are soy, egg, dairy, and wheat or gluten. So those would, if you're, if you want to just do an elimination diet, I would start with the one of those four items and you eliminate one at a time to see what's bothering you. But the ALCAT testing is really, really useful. And and you can check for food, um, not only food sensitivities, but sensitivities to food colorings and additives. So, Have you seen these um, kits that you can order yourself and do at home? Have you ever seen those? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure how they're getting that information from a blood spot, um, you know, where you prick your finger and you put a dab of blood on a little paper, and then they do the testing from that sample that's on the paper. Because when we do ALCAT testing, um, it requires like six tubes of blood. Um, because they use, you know, a decent amount of blood for each food to, to get a real accurate um, measurement of reactivity. So I just don't know how accurate those are, to be honest with you. Um, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me that you could test all that from a drop or two of blood. But, you know. Yeah. I see those advertised and I wonder... And maybe, you know, I haven't really looked carefully into those um, because I do do the ALCAT testing, but um, I don't know on a single sample how how many tests they run on that either. I would assume it's not 250 foods, but I'd have to look into that. I'm, I'm not sure about that. So... But you can certainly you can certainly go to their website and and um, and you know they have a find find a provider option to f- figure out where you can get a test done. Oh, that's good to know. What yeah. are your thoughts on kombucha? I have all these people that are going. I've got a kombucha baby going, and they <laughs> and they are making their own kombucha, which I I I don't want to get into that. Um, myself, I don't want to have that. It's like a start, a sourdough starter. Um, but it is, uh, you know, you see uh, so much kombucha now in grocery stores and it's supposed to be good for gut health. How do you feel about that? Yeah, because it has, it has natural, it has probiotics, good bacteria to, um, replenish in your gut. Yeah. So it's the same idea, you know, as, you know, ferment, eating fermented foods, um, kombucha is, fermented in this, you know, similar fashion. So it, it promotes, um, a healthy microbiome just by drinking kombucha. So, so that's certainly people? an option. Too. And, and again, that is a great option. If you would just want to have something for maintenance, um, if you're having, you know, pretty chronic symptoms of IBS or chronic constipation, you might need a more intensive regimen uh, for correction, and then kombucha would be a good maintenance. So option. you're saying 
I would need to, so you go to the website, Sweaty and Pissed, and if I ordered the 12 week, you know, the intensive so I could heal, Mm -hmm. and at the same time, cut out the foods that cause problems, which I, Mm -hmm. I know what my foods are, but you know, somebody out there would need to go and get the test done. But at the same time, you cut out the bad foods, take Mm -hmm. this protocol for 12 weeks. And then after that, try to eat foods that put healthy, what did you just call it? I'm sorry. (laughs) Healthy (laughs) biome. It it, it promotes a a healthy microbiome. Microbiome. Mm -hmm. So foods that that do that. Yeah, but and and again, that same regimen, those same supplements that you use for that twelve week intensive treatment period, you can continue with maintenance dosing. Does that make sense? Yeah, and and do that along with you know changing diet and drinking kombucha and you know all those other things. But it's a good a source for prebiotic, probiotic, and healing of the lining. So. It could help just, especially if it, the problem's been going on for a long time, which for most people, that is the case, um, then you probably want to have a, a good re- regimen for maintenance for at least a year after you do an intensive regimen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's it's interesting. I I I got a um a text from my my cousin, you know, the the dog trainer and she um she hate that cousin the dog trainer. Anyway, um and she was asking about leaky gut for one of her dogs and you know there are whole leaky gut protocol supplements for dogs as well i guess it's a pretty common problem i'm not a veterinarian so i'm not recommending anything but um but it's out there they have um repair kits uh, oh my lord what was her little dog doing I mean, what are they? What are their symptoms? Same thing. Like, is it think, constipation just, or diarrhea? Yeah, just you know, you know, they'll be have abdominal bloating and diarrhea, and they're cranky, and they vomit a lot, and um, you know that kind of stuff. Just a lot of GI symptoms, and just it clearly, you know, you know how you can tell when an animal just doesn't feel well, and um, I think they just look like they don't feel well most of the time and are sort of grumpy oh yeah well mine have terrible anal glands (laughs) they need to have their anal glands done and i thought oh is that what it is but they're pretty happy they're not grumpy yeah yeah i mean some of them you know struggle to eat you know they're, they're they'll have poor appetite um so they you have to work hard to get them to eat so if your pet is eating well and having normal bowel function, that's probably not their problem. Again, I'm not a veterinarian, but I would just say from common sense, if they're eating well and having regular bowel movements and not dealing with diarrhea, then they, they probably are have a pretty balanced gut system. So. Yeah, I would say, oh my gosh, if I've got to heal my gut and two beagles. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll order that, Karen, and I'll get on that regimen. Yeah, just and I always give you something else to do just to make your life to more swallow. I know there's a lot of lot of <laughs> lot of vitamins. <laughs> I've been taking them though. I'm doing great, and I keep hearing about you know you've always uh, been a big fan of vitamin D and you hear during this COVID about the vitamin D. And so I'm, I'm taking my vitamin D and I'm trying, I'm really trying to sleep well. You know, we talked about sleep and, and I'm sure that affects someone's leaky gut, doesn't it? With stress and oh, someone's sure. not sleeping well. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, our lifestyle is what really drives this whole gut problem. I mean, you know, it always comes back. Have you noticed it always comes back to that when we're, when we're talking about this? It's like sleeping well, eating a healthy diet with, with free of preservatives if possible, and um, exercising, don't smoke, don't drink excessively. All the things that help everything else will help leaky gut as well. Okay, and and the, it it will be on the website. What the protocol? I mean, which one to, is your twelve week one? Uh, yeah, I have a link to. It's up there now. I have a link to the twelve week protocol using those three supplements I mentioned earlier, and a website, the Microbiome Lab website, um, where you can purchase the supplements. Um, and okay. I think I mentioned, well, honey, thank you for doing that. Last... Like you've got enough time to type something on a website. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it's true. But, um, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm probably not getting as much sleep as I should, but, um, you know, I got it up there and, uh, and, and Forrest taught me how to post things on the website because I was asking him to do it. I'd write about, write it up and send it to him and he kindly put it up for me, but um, now that I know how to do it myself, I can just put it directly up there and save him some time. So, but yeah, I'm trying to do my best to get things up uh, as quickly as possible. But uh, I hope our our listeners will be patient with me if I don't get it up for a few days. But um, yeah, but all everything you need is up there. Oh, I was going to say. Um, on the Microbiome Labs website. Those are supplements that are um, often purchased by um, medical providers and sold, you know, in their office. Uh, so, but you can purchase it directly on the website. You just have to register. And so it's a little bit different than buying something on Amazon because you just have to register to be able to purchase it. Okay, this is a crazy question, but are you selling them? Mm -hmm. Can I get them from you? I do not. I don't sell any supplements. Um, part of that is, well, the main thing is restriction from our overarching company. And um, so I, I sort of wish I could, not because of the profit issue, but so it just the ease of getting the supplements and because the easier, the sooner the person's going to be able to start the treatment. So I would love to be able to dispense supplements and uh, get people started sooner. But um, just the nature of our company, I, I'm not able to do that. That's a shame because, you know, people don't realize, uh, well, they probably do by now if they've listened to Sweaty and PS for a long time. But Karen's like our Elvis rock star in Knoxville and you can't get in to see her and Lord, if she's saying I've got supplements in a store, people would be standing out in front trying to get to them, wouldn't they? Yes, they would. Uh, I, you know, you don't realize how much you can drive the market until um, I went, uh, I was, I would tell patients to take tart cherry juice uh, to reduce inflammation and uh, they had it at our local fresh market store, but they only would have like three or four bottles on the shelf. And apparently <laughs> all of my patients kept going in there and asking for tart cherry juice and, um, and they were out of it. So um, the next time I went into fresh market, you know, how they have those end cap things right at the ca uh, cashier uh, checkout area, they had floor to ceiling um, stacked up with tart cherry juice. I think I got on it too. And see, I forgot about that. I go back to the tart cherry. I went and bought it. <laughs> I drove that sale uh, right up. Can we tell them, speaking of sales, that we have yeah. merchandise? Oh, yes. It's got sweaty and pissed on it. It's got uh, me and Karen. We've got leggings. I've laughed so hard over that. I've told people we have leggings, and who doesn't love a legging? But it has got the li almost life-size caricatures of my face and Karen's face. I'm on one leg. She's on the other. And uh, people have bought them. 
And they're, I know. And in a forest, our producer picked out, I mean, really put it, uh, our logo and everything on products on cute pinks, blues, cute colors, and it is flying out the door. So if anybody needs a mask with sweaty and pissed on it, which I, I think everybody that works at my Costco on Fridays needs to wear that one. But, um, uh, yeah, because every time everybody wears a mask, they're sweaty and pissed about it. Yeah, so. everybody's so sweaty and it makes you sweat and it makes your eyeglasses fall up, fog up. But, um, yeah. and you know, the sweet people at Costco, I love them. I don't mean to rib them, but you know, they can't hear, you can't hear them. Everybody's, you know, it's frustrating. They work so hard when some, when a bunch of people are at Costco, it's a bunch of people at Costco and they, they've got the plexiglass in front of them. They can't hear, they can't see. I can't see, I can't hear. And so I, I thought, well, they need, they need the um, mass that says sweaty and pissed on them. But anyway, we do have merchandise. So you can go to our Facebook page and uh, there, there's a link there. And there's a link on our website where you would go to look at the blogs. We have mugs, we have um, fanny packs, socks. Socks are pretty cute, I have to say. Yeah, and I think I like a good fanny pack. If I'm going to walk, I need to put my keys and my phone in something. I don't want to hold them. I can't enjoy my walk. So I like a good fanny pack. Well, there you go. Get on there and order one. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about, Lakey Gut? Oh, um, I don't think so. I just wanted to see if you had some questions about it after that episode and if there's um, any thoughts you have about it. If that's something that you have friends who tell you about. or I know that it's very important to heal your gut. And I, that's the buzzword. Everybody's talking about the gut. And then it can cause brain yes. fog and all kind and depression and I don't even know what all. And everywhere I go, people go, you know what? I'm off of gluten and I quit eating sugar. And you know, everybody's um, talking about healing the leaky gut. It's a good place. I mean, if you want to be healthy overall, it's a very good place to start. Because if the goal is to heal the leaky gut, all the things you do from a lifestyle perspective to fix that will fix so many other things. So it, it's uh, maybe just focusing on the gut will help you heal your whole body. Sometimes it's easier when you um, have a more focused goal in terms of wellness uh, and rather than thinking, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to, you know, just... I'm going to focus on healing the gut, everything I need to do to heal the gut, and it will help so many other things. So, so you'll just need to pop on our website, Leanne, and, and uh, check out those links. I will. And, uh, yeah. I will. I'll order them today. Yeah. I'll order them while I'm not at my little mom and daddy's in the country with no Wi-Fi. I'll order them. <laughs> I'm at my sister's house. We're <laughs> recording with Karen. And I had, I'm in the middle Tennessee where my little mom and daddy live. And my sister lives in a town that's um, pretty big, um, Clarksville. And I have to when I have to do any kind of work, I have to come to my sister's house while I'm taking care of my parents because I can't I can't upload videos. I, d I don't have the, the uh, bandwidth. But. Their little town of Adams, it's not, got 600 people now, they're supposed to have it by November, October or November. And so we're thrilled for them. But when I was in high school, um, I, didn't know, I didn't know what cable was. We didn't have cable. Everybody else had it in larger cities. And I went to take my ACT and Austin P and my sisters. I stayed at her apartment. And I watched Benny Hill all night because I always thought Benny Hill was so funny and I set up and watched that instead of going to bed and getting ready for that ACT and then I went to McDonald's the next morning I was just so fascinated by cable because we didn't have it in the country 
And then I went, and this was 1982. And then I went to McDonald's and got a cup of coffee, burned my tongue on it real bad, went in and took the ACT. I don't even know. I think I paid attention to some of it. But, you know, back then, Lord, it, it, it didn't matter if you took it or not. Everybody got in somewhere, you know. Yeah. It's no telling if I had to take it now. They'd just say, no, Lynn, you can't, you can't go. But <laughs> anyway, uh, we're in Adams. We're always behind. So we were behind on, with cable. And then now, I mean, they've had Wi-Fi, but it's just so spotty and it's not, you know, they can't get Netflix or anything like that. So anyway, oh. that's what I've been doing. Well, I know it's, it's, there are some good things about not having Wi-Fi, you know, having, being in a place where you're out of touch. There's a lot of good about that, but, um, but it does make, make it difficult during the time of COVID to get done what you need done when you don't have Wi-Fi. Right. And, but let me tell you, they still get the freaking news and the <laughs> national news and local news scare my little mom and daddy to death. And I've said to them, just stop watching this. Y'all got to stop watching this 24 hours a day. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, I think it causes so much stress, especially in elderly people. Yeah. And, um, so we're trying to watch pioneer woman cook. And my dad said, she's not my cup of tea. (laughs) And I said, mama, do you think her husband loves her? And she said, I don't think so. (laughs) But I, Mom was just being funny. I'm sure Pioneer Woman's husband worships her. She makes all that queso, and he's working in the fields. I'm sure he's thrilled. But anyway, we sit there and watch that kind of stuff until I'm loony. But I'd rather watch that than, you know, sit in just this news cycle constantly saying horrible things. Nobody needs all that stress. No, that just leads to hand wringing and teeth teeth gnashing, you know. Yeah. There's nothing, you know, what, what's that going to do, but just scare the fool out of you. They're not going yeah. anywhere. God love them. They're isolated yeah. at home and they just don't need to worry about what's going on in Indonesia, you know? Right. right. Okay. Well, um, okay. My darling, is there anything else we need to tell them? I don't think so. Just remember to visit the merchandise, uh, store via our Facebook or our, our, um, website and um and you're planning on getting some of the merch too right i am i need to i need to get that and and wear it i i hate to put a tight t-shirt across these blowed up breasts as my mama calls them (laughs) but i do we do have t-shirts that that do not clean and so uh, yes. If you're going through menopause and you don't want anything to cling to you, look at our T-shirts. We got it. That's right. We got all all kinds of sizes. So if you like to get them a couple sizes bigger, they're there yeah. for sure. Yeah. Lounge in them. Put a top knot on top of your head. Get on a pair of sweatpants and or our leggings <laughs> with our faces on them. <laughs> and if you don't want... Um, uh, Leanne's and my face on each hip. Then um, Forrest also designed a, a legging that just says sweaty and pissed down one leg. So it's simpler. Oh, oh, I have yeah. not seen those. Forrest. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. So there's an option if you don't. <laughs> but if you don't um, want a big caricature of me sweating and caring with a stethoscope on. It, even though that's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, people are threatening to put my sticker on their refrigerator or their wine fridge to keep them out of it. <laughs> oh, well, that make yeah, that'd be good. Like you're um, in their home telling them what to eat. That'd be good. That's right. That's right. Just a little reminder. So, well, it's been it's been good to get back together and and um, and glad you're thinking about healing your leaky gut. And I'm sure there are a lot of other people out there who probably would like to or need to join you. So I hope, hope the information that I have put up on the, the website will help you. Well, I'm tickled over it and I'm going to really try to uh, commit myself to that. And by the time I get back out on tour, I hope 
that you girls come up to me and tell me that your gut's okay. So let's make a commitment to everybody listening that we're going to heal our leaky guts by the time the COVID is over. Yes. We're going to be prancing and dancing with, with healthy guts. I think that's a fabulous goal. And by that time, Karen, my little baby will be here, my grandbaby. And I want a healthy gut for my grandbaby. Yes. Your little squash when she comes. He, she, is it, he, do we know the sex yet? It's a boy. A boy. A boy. Yeah. That's why he's so wild and he swims and it's like he's pushing his feet up up off a pool. You know, when you're, (laughs) you see kids swimming and they push their feet off and then go and then on the other side. That's what he does. Charlie said that's what he does during that when they try to get ultrasound of him. He's really wild and active. Zip, and, zipping around in there. Yeah. and But Charlie was always active. He's always been very sweet and kind and easy to be with, like your forest. Um, but Charlie was, uh, and still is, he runs all the time. And But he, when he was a baby, he'd just walk across the top of the couch. I mean, he just had to be going and doing. <laughs> And then I had the girls and they were, Maggie was kind of busy. She was busy tending to her brother and her sister. Like she was, you know, 45 years old. And then, uh, but Charlie was probably more active than the girls, but I think that's a boy, a sweet boy thing. So we're excited about him coming, honey, where there's going to be river otter stuffed animals and Oh, um, yeah. yeah, you know, because he's a fly fishing guide. So it's going to be a lot of, I think it's going to be a river theme, a Smoky Mountain River theme. Perfect. I know. So excited. So excited for your family and for, for Charlie and Mary. Thank That's you. so great. Thank you. We're okay. we're very tickled. Chuck says, Lynn, I'll take care of this baby. You're going to be on tour. <laughs> I'm going to take care of this baby. And I thought, oh, and you know, Mary has had nightmares that before she even got pregnant, that she had a baby and that she would come to our house and Chuck would take her baby and she wouldn't get to see her baby all of Christmas. <laughs> and, and you know, that's how he'll be. I mean, I'll just say he'll take over their baby because he's a baby cuddler at Children's Hospital. Uh, he loves a baby. So, uh, and he knows how to so tend good. to him. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so he, and I tell this on stage, he did not tend to mine. He was gone <laughs> and working and I was by myself. <laughs> but he knows how to tend to a baby. So he'll be a yep. good granddaddy. Yeah. Making up for lost time. Making up for lost time. He was making a living, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I've enjoyed you today, yeah. my darling. And we will see. Well, I, I do want to thank Forrest for producing Forrest Winsel. And again, uh, thanks to Stephen Brown for our artwork. And um, we'll plan on seeing you next time. All righty. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.